Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. Well, the Innovation Exchange is helping large corporates in Ireland to satisfy their specific digital transformation needs by matching them with startups, scale ups, and SMEs that can provide innovative solutions. Conor Carmody, the Programme Director with the Innovation Exchange, joins us now to tell us exactly how this initiative works. Conor, we'll be discussing the Innovation Exchange and how it assists large corporates facing digital transformation challenges. But first, I'd like to get an insight into your own career. Uh, Good morning, Carl, and uh, delighted to be with you. Thanks for having me on. So I started off in retail. I actually had a business in Russia back in the 90s, would you believe, Carl, and the walls were coming down. We opened up some retail outlets uh, and were very successful for a good number of years. And then as my family started to arrive, uh, we decided to move back to Ireland. Um, but a great time and a great time of entrepreneurial spirit in Russia, uh, indeed. Um, coming back, I was fortunate to go in as part of the launch team for Meteor Mobile. And for those of your listeners who remember, we secured the third license in 2000. Um, 2000. And we were facing two very strong competitors in Vodafone and uh, Digifone at the time, and then they became O2. And so we were a startup. We were bootstrapping. We had secured the license after a lengthy uh, legal battle. And we then had to send a set about building a, a clear proposition that would allow us to compete against these two well-funded uh giants who had very strong market positions, had very strong brand identity and awareness. And we had to kind of carve out a position for ourselves as the, the brash upstart in that in that space. So what did that proposition then look like? Well, to a generation today who doesn't remember mostly uh, back in those days, you had to pay for every call and pay for every text. Uh, and we were the ones who introduced uh, the notion of bundling up free text. So we offered basically free text messaging uh, prior to social media, prior to all that, uh, to anyone who joined the network. We had a large network that was empty uh, and we could afford to give away, uh, you know, on our own network, there was no charge to it pretty much. And we built a proposition that said, come join the network and have free text to all your mates. And we targeted at a youth audience uh, and we some really slick advertising, uh, very well targeted, supported by a strong distribution network. Those principles still apply today, I guess, to anyone who's building a network or to building a a proposition. Uh, And we we became immensely successful. Um, Within a very short space of time, we got to a million customers, significant revenue, profitability, uh, and ultimately uh, sold the business off to Aircom. And following the sale of Meteor, you subsequently worked for both Aircom and Vodafone. What were the highlights of working for these established telecoms companies and what did you learn from those experiences? That's a great question, Carl. I think uh, from Aircom, I set up eMobile for them, which was a new brand that I guess around 2011, 2012, they were looking to reimagine Aircom as a brand and we I, we helped them kind of build a proposition called eMobile, which was them creating a mobile brand specifically for Aircom. And if you look at it today, they now have eFiber and eHome and eThis. So we started that proposition and that brand work with them. Uh, So I did that for about 12 months, uh, and that was quite a significant piece of work uh, we were very proud of at the time. And then uh, I spent a year with Vodafone as a marketing director. um, And I guess it was, for me, there was a huge learning coming from this entrepreneurial culture that I'd spent the last 20 years moving into a large corporate environment, uh, an exceptionally well-run business, Vodafone, very structured. And for me, it was entirely all new. Um, So what did I learn from it? It gave me a huge insight into the ways of the corporate world, which are very relevant to the conversation we're going to have in a few minutes. But the difference between the the brash startup, uh, the the kind of the madness that goes with that into a very structured business, uh, looking back in it, the, uh, the contrast between those two couldn't be bigger. And fast forwarding to your current role as Programme Director with the Innovation Exchange, what were the origins of the Innovation Exchange and what service does it provide? When I looked at the market, so I'm doing a lot of work around kind of startups and scale-ups at the moment. Um, and when I looked at the market, drawing on my experience from both corporate and startup, it seems to me that there's a mismatch between the corporate's and the scale-ups. And the mismatch is that the corporates want to buy 
from established businesses in Ireland or from scale-ups or from technology providers. And those providers want to sell to corporates. But neither party appears to be able to speak the same language. And it seems to me there's a, there's a mismatch. So when I spoke to corporates as I was developing this proposition with Skillnet, uh, we went out into the market and the corporates buyers that I spoke to said, we'd love to buy from established Irish companies and technology providers, but we can't actually find them. And we're forced to buy from overseas companies. And in the meantime, the technology providers that I was working with, the SMEs and the scale-ups and the startups, they were saying, we'd love to pitch to corporates, but we never get an opportunity. And when I spoke with Skillnet, who are you know, a training agency, uh, but also have a very deep understanding of the strategic requirements for Ireland as a, as a country around digital transformation, around climate innovation and some of those big areas. And I pitched to them this idea that if we could get corporates buying and selling from S technology providers, it would have a significant impact on digital transformation here in Ireland and would be very good for the Irish economy. So we started uh, with a pilot in quarter four, 2021, which allowed us to kind of prove, if you will, the, the hypothesis. And then for this year, we've been rolling it out. And what we're trying to do is assemble, you know, a bunch, 25, 30 corporates on the one hand, and we've some of Ireland's biggest names, Ryanair, Glanbia, AXA, Musgrave, people of this, on PUS, ESB, people like this. And on the other side, we've uh, onboarded nearly 200 SMEs and what we're trying to build is a curated ecosystem an innovation ecosystem where we can bring people in and we can get them to talk to each other to buy and sell to each other to raise the awareness of the importance of digital transformation for Ireland and Connor, how are you actually accessing these corporates is it through the IDA through Enterprise Ireland or through Skillnet well, it's through a combination. So yes, we have a D, we have signed up with the IDA and they have their disruptive technology portal. We've signed up with that um, and that's a really good place. We have started discussions with Enterprise Ireland and they have a significant amount of these scale-up type companies to work with. We have uh, through Further, uh, who, which is the, the organisation that supports us on the delivery of the Innovation Exchange, we've access to uh, companies then. And then we use some good old-fashioned legwork. So we in looking at the ecosystem and in understanding the companies and their requirements, we can then go and pitch to them and say, we've looked at you, we think here's the problems you're trying to solve, and we think we can help you with that. So how many startup companies have signed up to the Innovation Exchange? So we have right now about 200 companies on the programme with us, and there are scale-ups, there are some existing SMEs, um, and the criteria really that we're looking for, Carl, is that you have a product, you have the capability and the capacity to take on board and deal with a large corporate. So if you're probably at a very early stage at MVP or at beta stage, probably you're not ready for us. We'd love to talk to you, but you're probably about 12 months from being able because we're going to put you in front of a buyer for one of the large corporates here in Ireland. And they're going to say, if we do a deal with you, can you service us? Can you support us? Have you got the back office structure? Have you got the product capability uh, and all of that sort of stuff? So startups, uh, that have well-developed propositions and products, scale-ups, and uh, you know, on up into the kind of the the, the SME uh, type company is is where we're talking to. The sectors uh, broadly, we're all about digital transformation and the importance of digital transformation to Ireland is is kind of underpinning what we do, and we know that that's a big requirement for for both corporates and for SMEs. So. The overarching issue is, do you have a technology? Do you have a, a, a piece of tech that will enable us, uh, somebody to do something differently? And where we're seeing some good successes is in process automation. So RPA or robotic process automation. And a lot of the companies coming in are saying, we can help corporates streamline back-end processes, make the stuff that you do manual, we can automate that and make it easier for you. And that allows you then to focus your time on thinking about growing your business. We're seeing quite a bit on customer, CX customer experience. So we're seeing quite a bit on that. And then there's quite a few of the software companies that are looking to see can they assist the larger corporates with kind of back-end platform development. But, you know, the overarching aim here is can we help large corporates 
embrace a new world of digital transformation. And talk to us about the revenue model underpinning the Innovation Exchange. So it's a programme that's funded by Skillnet uh, and it is part of their the two big pillars uh, that government has uh, and that's very well reflected with Skillnet is digital transformation and climate. So we play under this digital transformation uh, stream. So they're funding, part funding us to help us build this ecosystem because of the significant impact we think we can have on transformation for Ireland. So that's kind of one part of it. The second part is we ask the participants to make a nominal contribution. So for an SME to join this programme, they'll pay us €250 for a year. And that gives them access next year to, I think it's going to be maybe 35 corporate pitches. It's going to give them access to a calendar of masterclasses and webinars. It's going to give them access to collaboration events. We had a very successful one with the ESB at their new headquarters in uh, Dublin recently. Um, We'd like to replicate that around the country so this becomes truly national. And we go to the regions we run events, we bring SMEs together, we bring corporates together and we get them talking to each other. And that's what they get for that. And on the other hand, then we we are working with some of the corporates to say, you should probably contribute to the programme and help us really build and scale this up. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Conor Carmody from the Innovation Exchange. And it's great to see this marketplace helping smaller Irish businesses to gain access to larger corporates in the market. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.